comparison of single crystal X-ray diffraction, NMR and cryo-M, provided by Creative Biostructure. We will introduce from several aspects, including introduction, single crystal X-ray diffraction, nuclear magnetic resonance, cryo-electron microscopy and summary. First, introduction, why do we need to determine the protein structure? The three-dimensional structure of proteins and protein complexes provide great insights into the laws of life activities and mechanism of diseases, and thereby allowing rational design of novel diagnostic and therapeutic agents. So, what are the techniques for determination of protein structure? There are three main research techniques for protein structure determination, including single crystal X-ray diffraction, nuclear magnetic resonance and cryo-electron microscopy. However, there is no all-purpose method since all three of them offer unique advantages as well as limitations. Next, let's start with single crystal X-ray diffraction. What is the principle behind single crystal X-ray diffraction? X-ray crystallography uses X-ray to determine the position and arrangement of atoms in a crystal. The most classical method of X-ray crystallography is single crystal X-ray diffraction, in which crystal atoms cause the incident X-ray beam to produce scattered beams. When the scattered beams land on the detector, these beams produce a speckled diffraction pattern. As the crystal is gradually rotated, the angle and intensity of these diffracted beams can be measured and then a three-dimensional image of the electron density within the crystal is generated. Based on this electron density, the average position of atoms in the crystal, chemical bonds, crystal barriers, and various information can be determined. For a single crystal with sufficient purity, homogeneity and regularity, the X-ray diffraction data can determine the average chemical bond angle and length to within a few tenths of a degree and to within a few thousandths of an angstrom, respectively. What is the development of single crystal X-ray diffraction? The single crystal X-ray diffraction technique was proposed and developed in 1912, and it has become the most important and useful tool for determining protein structure, since the protein structure of myoglobin was first determined in 1958. Nowadays, more than 120,000 protein structures resolved by single crystal X-ray diffraction have been deposited in Protein Data Bank, accounting for nearly 90% of the total suggesting its advantages in studying the structure of biological macromolecule crystals. What is the procedures of single crystal X-ray diffraction? The process of single crystal X-ray diffraction technique can be roughly divided into four steps. The first step is to obtain high-quality single crystals of the target protein, which is called protein crystallization. When the solution of the solubilized protein reaches supersaturation, it promotes protein aggregation and nucleation. Ultimately, individual protein molecules arrange themselves in a repeating series of unit cells by adopting a uniform orientation. Qualified crystals need to be of sufficient size, normally larger 50 micrometers in all dimension and high quality, such as regular structure, no cracks or twins. Obtaining single crystals of high quality is the limiting step to solve a structure with this method. After obtaining a single crystal, a diffraction experiment is required. The crystal is immobilized in an intense X-ray beam, producing a diffraction pattern, which is recorded as the diffraction data, including angle and intensity of the diffracted X-rays. As the crystal is gradually rotated, the previous reflections disappear and new reflections emerge. The diffraction intensity at each spot is recorded from each direction of the crystal. Subsequently, the diffraction data obtained from the diffraction pattern are combined with various methods of structural analysis and data fitting to analyze the electron density distribution in the three-dimensional space within the unit cell. In the last step, based on the electron density map, a model of atomic arrangement in the crystal can be produced and refined. What is the pros and cons of single crystal X-ray diffraction? This technology has been developing for a long time, may yield high atomic resolution and is not limited by the molecular weight of the sample. 
It is suitable for water-soluble proteins, membrane proteins as well as macromolecular complexes. When manipulated properly, it becomes a powerful tool to deliver reliable structural data of biological macromolecules and determine the position and structure of the active center, and helps understand how the protein recognizes and binds ligand molecules at the atomic level. However, the single crystal X-ray diffraction method also has several disadvantages. First, the sample must be crystallizable, but crystallization of biological macromolecules with large molecular weight can be difficult, particularly, membrane proteins are more challenging to crystallize because of its large size and poor solubilization. Second, an organized single crystal must be obtained to allow appropriate diffraction. Finally, the obtained three-dimensional structure of biological sample only represents a static form of the tested molecule, one of many possibilities, rather than a dynamic one. Then we will talk about the nuclear magnetic resonance. What is the principle behind nuclear magnetic resonance? Nuclei or charged, fast-spinning particles, which are similar to outer electrons. The gyromagnetic ratios of different atomic nuclei are different and therefore have different resonance frequencies. The movement of the nucleus is not isolated it interacts with the surrounding atoms both intra and intermolecularly. Therefore, through nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, structural information of a given molecule can be obtained. Taking protein as an example, its secondary structure, such as alpha helix, beta sheet, turn, circular, and curl, reflect the different arrangement of the main chain atoms of protein molecules three-dimensionally. The spacing of the atomic nuclei in different secondary domains, the interaction between nuclei, and the dynamic characteristics of polypeptide segments all directly reflect the three-dimensional structure of proteins. These nuclear features all contribute to spectroscopic behaviors of the analyzed sample, thus providing characteristic NMR signals. Interpretation of these signals by computer-aided methods leads to deciphering of the three-dimensional structure. What is the development of nuclear magnetic resonance? Since the first observation of condensed state NMR signals in 1946, NMR technology has experienced a rapid development for over 70 years, and its application has been extended from the area of physics such as nuclear magnetic moment determination to chemistry, medicine, material science, life science and many others. Notably, in the 1980s, NMR technology was applied in the structural analysis of protein creatively, thus promoting the application of NMR in biological field. Although the amount of three-dimensional structure data of proteins obtained by NMR technology is not comparable to that of single crystal X-ray diffraction, the unique advantages of NMR technology have been widely noticed. NMR is able to provide information on a kinetic basis, such that the internal movement of proteins over multiple time scales and their binding mechanism to ligands can therefore be solved. What is the procedures of nuclear magnetic resonance? There are four main steps in an NMR experiment, sample preparation, data acquisition, spectral processing, and structural analysis, respectively. In the first step, NMR analysis is performed on aqueous samples of protein with high purity, high stability, and high concentration. A sample volume ranging from 300 to 600 microliters with a concentration range of 0.1 to 3 millimolar. The use of stable isotopes for protein labeling can effectively increase signal intensity and resolution. Selective labeling of certain amino acids or chemical groups of proteins can greatly reduce signal overlap. Next, multidimensional NMR experiments are utilized to acquire information about the protein. The spectral processing is then performed to determine the atoms of the protein corresponding to each spectral peak on different NMR spectra. Finally, a series of spatially structured information such as NOE and J coupling constants are used to calculate the spatial structure using distance geometric or molecular dynamics methods. What is the pros and cons of nuclear magnetic resonance? 
The most important feature of the NMR method is that the three-dimensional structure of macromolecules in the natural state can be measured directly in solution, and NMR may provide unique information about dynamics and intermolecular interactions. The resolution of the macromolecular three-dimensional structure can be as low as sub-nanometer. However, the NMR spectrum of biomolecules with large molecular weight is very complicated and difficult to interpret, thereby limiting the application of NMR in analyzing large biomolecules. Additionally, this technique requires relatively large amounts of pure samples, on the order of several mg, to achieve a reasonable signal-to-noise level. The third approach is the cryo-electron microscopy technique. What is the principle behind cryo-electron microscopy? Cryo-M includes three different methods, respectively, single particle analysis, electron tomography and electron crystallography. We focus on the first method here. The essential mechanism of cryo-M is electron scattering. The basic principle is described as follows. Samples are prepared through cryopreservation prior to analysis. The coherent electrons are used as a light source to measure the sample. After the electron beam passes through the sample and the nearby ice layer, the lens system converts the scattered signal into a magnified image recorded on the detector. And signal processing is performed to obtain the three-dimensional structure of the sample. What is the development of cryo-electron microscopy? Electron microscopy three-dimensional reconstruction technology was first discovered in 1968. The three-dimensional structure of T4 phage tail was reconstructed by electron micrographs. And then the general concept and methods of three-dimensional reconstruction of electron microscopy were proposed. For reducing the radiation damage, cryogenic electron microscopy was created in 1974. After more than 30 years of development, CryoM has become a powerful tool for studying the structure of biological macromolecules. In recent years, the CryoM technology has made revolutionary progress, particularly in the single particle analysis. Since 2013, with the tremendous advances in electron detector and image processing, Cryo-M single particle analysis has progressed so rapidly that the resolution of Cryo-M is now comparable to single crystal X-ray diffraction. At present, Cryo-M is becoming a powerful tool for determining higher resolution structure of biological macromolecules. And the Nobel Prize in Chemistry 2017 was awarded to Jacques Dubochet, Joachim Frank and Richard Henderson for developing Cryo-M for the high-resolution structure determination of biomolecules in solution. What is the procedures of cryo-electron microscopy? Protein purification. High purity of the sample is important, as in single crystal X-ray diffraction. Negative stain is useful to clearly visualize the sample and check its homogeneity, especially for small particles. Particles are boxed from the micrographs, centered and aligned. Classification and averaging give improved SNR, and class averages can be used to obtain a low resolution initial model by common lines or tilt methods. In CryoM, the vitrified sample is imaged by collecting movie frames that are aligned for motion correction and then averaged. Defocus determination and CTF correction are done on motion corrected averaged images. After alignment, classification and cleaning of the dataset, particles are assigned orientations by projection matching to the initial model. Orientation refinement is performed iteratively until the structure converges. What is the pros and cons of cryo-electron microscopy? Compared to single crystal X-ray diffraction, the rapid freeze treatment of the sample maintains its closer to native state. Moreover, this method requires only a small amount of sample, about 0.1 mg, is more forgiven on sample purity, and does not need the protein to crystallize. The main defect in this technique is that the particles are detected in unknown orientations. High levels of noise, due to the use of limited electron doses to minimize radiation damage, especially at high resolution, tends to complicate the determination of these orientations and this is particularly a concern for smaller particles. Hence, 
structure determination of biological macromolecules by cryo-M was limited to large complexes or low resolution models over the last few years. In summary, each technology has its own advantages in certain applications such that one method might be used extensively in some cases but rarely in others. Thus, understanding the nature of the analysis is the key in method selection. Not only will the inappropriate selection of method produce compromised results, it may also cause significant delays of the project, and result in financial losses. We provide single crystal X-ray diffraction. NMR and CryoM services for three-dimensional protein structure determination in our company. If you have any questions on protein structure determination, welcome to contact us for detailed information. Thanks for your watching.